This is part six of renovating a Mary Beam engine. Whilst I'm waiting for a friend of mine to send me the drawing for the Governor linkage arm, I thought I would show a little bit more about the painting and preparation. And also at the same time, mention a little bit about colour matching. Earlier on in the series, I explained how to use a small paintbrush and some white spirit to remove the residue left by metal polish and general years of grime. Some of this is proving rather stubborn, so I'm using a toothbrush and again some white spirit to get rid of it. Historically, people build steam engines and paint them green. Some people use Stuart Models paint, which is a different shade of green. Most people seem to use Humbrol green, and sometimes a Humbrol green from many years ago that appears to be darker. It may be darker because of the age of the paint, but when working on old steam models, I like to match the colour accurately. That way the renovated model does not look like it's been just hit with touch-up paint. These are what I would term the big three, the most popular three colours used in model engineering. Green, black and red. This is Humbrol Gloss Green, number three. And this is Humbrol Gloss Black, number 21. And a very popular colour for flywheels and buffer beams is Humbrol Gloss Red, which is number 19. Over many years on a model, the gloss red seems to go slightly paler, the black stays just about as it is, and the green seems to go ever so slightly darker. Now you may be saying, this man is an idiot, you're probably right, and I'm buying small tins. The reason for this is if I buy a bigger tin and don't use it all over a long period, it goes like this, it skins over a few times and air gets into the cap. So I tend to buy the small tins of paint, which I use in one go, then I throw away the empty tin. Sometimes the lids on these small tins of paint can be on very tightly, so it's a good idea to work your way around with the screwdriver until the lid gives way, rather than bend the lid in just one position. And once the lid has been removed, stir the paint very well until the paint is uniformly smooth. And this is very necessary in old stock paint that's been on a shelf for a long time. The first thing I would normally do, I wipe the stick with the brush, and do a test colour match. I would work the paint into the brush on a piece of metal that I would use a little bit like an artist's palette for mixing the colours. But the first thing to do is to apply the paint just as it came out of the tin onto the model and see how close it is to the finish on the model. And as you can see, it's a little too bright. So the next thing to do is to try and get the shade correct. Mix a suitable amount of paint to cover the area requiring painting, then add a very small amount of black paint to the mix. If inadvertently you add too much black paint to the mix, it will go very dark very quickly. The solution for this is to then add some more of the original green colour to brighten it back up again. It's very much a case of trial and error and practice to get the colour match correct. What you need to do is apply it to the model, have a look at it, stand back and have a look at it, and then if it's wrong, wipe it off with a lint-free cloth and maybe a bit of white spirit. Do not, under any circumstances, use cellulose thinners, because cellulose thinners will remove any paint that's present anyway. This is a renovation, not a total rebuild. It would be very nice with some models just to put them in a bath of cellulose thinners, remove all the paint and start again, which I frequently do. But this is just a renovation. I wish to preserve the look of the original builder's painting, while at the same time making the engine look like it did when it was first built. Here I'm stirring a tin of red paint. This is Humbrol number 19, red. And this is the colour for the flywheel and the cylinder on this engine. The original colours have faded and there is some damage, so before I paint the parts, what I'm doing is rubbing them down with some very fine wet or dry sandpaper just to get a key for the paint, and to smooth out the damaged areas. The paint is sufficiently thick to fill these damaged areas, and a couple of coats should see the flywheel looking better than new. Here I'm doing the cylinder. This is a little tricky, and it's really difficult not to get paint on either yourself or other parts of the engine. I particularly enjoy painting the parts in situ without dismantling the engine completely because if you do that, you have to put the engine back together and you're very likely to damage the paint. 
If you're painting steam engine parts, either on the engine or off the engine, do not put too much paint on in one go. The paint is bound to run and that really looks bad and takes ages to sand off and you're probably better starting again. Be very careful how much you put on. In this video it looks like I'm putting a lot of paint on but I really am not. I go over and over the paint in order to make sure there are no runs and no chance of any runs occurring. You have to do this quickly. If you take too long the paint will start to dry and it will drag and give a poor paint finish. This modern Humbrol paint seems to be quite good. I also use Precision Paints, another brand, which are also very good indeed. Once you've finished with the paint, make sure the caps are fitted securely. Just one last colour to match, and this is the Crankweb colour. It's quite similar to this shade, which is number 7, which I believe is called Light Buff. And if anyone out there can tell me what colour Light Buff actually is and what it means, I will be very grateful, because I've never figured it out. That's all for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.